In this quick lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the Paragraph tab from the Text Tools in the Design Center. Now it's important to know that you've got to have a text box selected to be able to see the Paragraph tab. If I click here, you can see the tab disappears. If I click back on the text box, you can see it comes back. Now a text box is basically a container that contains our text, so the text wraps to within the boundaries of the text box. So for example, if I resize it, you can see that the text still flows to the boundary, whether I increase or decrease the font size. So just bring this back out again. Okay, so we're going to look at some of these tools that are available for text boxes or paragraph text, these layout tools. Now this is the indent. This, this uh, increases the actual offset between the left edge and the first part of the text, as you can see there. And I can also set it on a particular line of text or a paragraph by just simply clicking in there in text mode, and you can see I can indent just that block of text. So that's really handy for laying out your artwork depending on what you're doing at any particular time. So that's how indent works. Now bullet indent's a little bit different. That that's about bullets. So I'll just show you an example of that. We've got these this text here, and let's say we um, add bullets to these uh, these three lines here. So we simply select these here, click on the bullet drop down, insert bullets, and you can see that the bullets have been inserted. And you can see the bullet indent, which is set at two inches here, matches what we've got on screen here. So it's indented at two inches, and if I move that around, you can see that it follows that bullet indent. However, if I uncheck it, you'll see it ignores that and just goes to the first tab like so. So that's how those bullet indents work. They follow that particular indent there, depending on what you've got set. Okay, so we'll just zoom out a little bit here, so we can see what we're working on. Now I'm going to talk to you, actually I'm going to select the paragraph tab again. Okay, we're going to talk about columns now. So you can set the number of columns you can have in a text box here. So I might want, say, three columns. And this space here, this column gap, is a percentage of the width of the entire text box. So if I, as I increase that, say, up to, I don't know, 24%, you can see there that the columns, there's three columns with that gap, as so. And I can just turn that off when I don't need it anymore. So that's how that works. Okay, let's now talk about the advanced line spacing. Okay, so general line spacing is just the uh, the overall space between each line of the text. As you can see, as I increase that, it increases out, and then I can bring it back to 100%. Now, there's a relationship, obviously, between a numeric value and the percentage. They work together. So you can set the line space numerically, or you can set it as a percentage, as I'm doing here. Now, you may want to actually set line spacing between lines. You can actually do that. You simply select in text mode, and you set the current space. And as you can see, only this line of text is moving out. Now I'll set that to 5 inches. I've just drawn a dimension here previously. Let's grab that dimension. And you'll see that I've set it at 5 inches, and that is actually the line space between the two lines, as you can see there. So I've set it to 5 inches, and as you can see, it's actually spread it out exactly 5 inches between these two lines of text. Now, I can um, adjust this for multiple lines. I can ma and independently of each other. I'm not restricted on how I do this. I can make it smaller or further apart. And obviously, I'll have to remove that to show that 5-inch gap there. But essentially, you've got complete control over your line spacing using this particular tool here, where you just simply select in the line you want to space apart from the line above it, and you just change the settings or you change the measurement, and the line will change accordingly. So that's quite a good way if you're, if you're doing, say, um, stone masonry type work um, where you're actually laying out and you want exact positions or distances between lines. That's how we do it using these tools here. I'll just set all this back to how it was so you can see how that works. Okay, the next thing I'll talk about is these font styles. So in the program, you can actually select um, a font like for so I'll make this impact, which is distinctly different to say Times New Roman. I'll just make it a bit bigger to make it clear. So I've got these two completely different types of text. Now I can copy that font and I can actually paste it to this line of text. And as you can see, it's taken that line of text and changed the font based on the font I just copied. So there's a, a way of actually copying your fonts. And now I can select those fonts using that select font button. So any fonts that I've actually clicked on and click select font, it will select all instances of that font, as you can see there. I can also do that by style. So here I'm going to make this italic, as you can see here, bold italic, and I can select that as a style. So it doesn't matter how much text I've got in my design, 
I can actually select um, large slabs of text by the actual font or the font style and I can copy and paste it to other parts of my text. Using these tools in combination with each other it gives you a lot of power and control over uh, selecting and working with large slabs of text. It makes life very very easy. So you should become accustomed to those tools, they're very very useful. And that's how we use these tools in the uh, paragraph text and that's the end of this lesson. Thank you.